Hello, and welcome back to Soul Spy University, where your minds are free to expand and your souls can run free. <laughs> Essentially, your soul's home playground. Today, we will be covering where exactly is Boris Kiprianovich? Some people know him as Boriska Kiprianovich. He is a childhood prodigy, and we're going to get into all the amazing things he did in a brief, active summary. Um, and tell you where he's at now and why. Well, no one else has got this information. We're going to be recording it here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And please don't forget to support our content by clicking like. Um, please subscribe and be the first to share with your friends. Um, that would help us out so much. Um, so Tommy's here with the scoop. Um, where is Bariska? Well, first of all, um, you're going to give us an amazing summary in case of those who don't already know the amazingness of who Bariska was and is. Go ahead, Tommy. Hey, everyone. Uh, yeah, Boris, Boris Kipyanovich, he was a Russian kid. Uh, he was born in 1996 in Russia, obviously. Uh, he, at the age of two weeks, was able to hold his own head up and move his head around, look around, whatnot. Babies don't usually do that. Amazing. Um, he, after a few weeks of life, he was able to speak, say, you know, basic words, but still kind of crazy for a child, uh, for something that small, because it doesn't, doesn't happen, doesn't happen. Most of us don't start saying words until months and months, maybe a year. Wow. Um, yeah, this kid was, he was, as a baby, they, they were all like, oh, okay, we got something special here, but whatever. That was not the, the best part. At the age of 18 months, he began to read, simply write, and draw. And his drawings were kind of kind of strange. It was like weird purple like coloring in, in a weird like circular thing. He would make certain shapes. Doesn't matter. He's 18 months old. That's like, come on. At 18 months, I couldn't even hold a pen. But can you um, open that now? Barely. If you have ever seen my writing, barely. Anyway, back to Boris. <laughs> so, uh, because of his early childhood, like, you know, genius, if you were, if you would, um, he was admitted into into, into kindergarten at the age of two. Unbelievable. Yeah. So that's like. Phew. Amazing. So he. In school, started to talk about. Now he wasn't taught. He didn't read about this or anything, but he started speaking and drawing out and writing about space right. and uh, science and uh, the stars and everything. I love it. Uh, so people are like, all right, where the hell does this kid learn this? So <laughs> they 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 basically just put him off as like you know a genius. He's probably He's probably reading on his spare time or something like this. Mind you, he's just a child, mm -hmm. but he's he's showing that he is something far far more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So time went by, mm -hmm. and around the age of seven, him, his family, his family friends, and, and you know certain other people all went out camping. Now while out camping, he he was stern and told everyone, you know, please keep quiet. I have something important to tell all of you. Mm -hmm. Now, they thought he was just being a stupid kid and that he was like, oh, he's just going to tell some stupid story about uh, how he, you know, let's sort Barney on TV or something, whatever. Mm -hmm. So he kept at it and he wasn't being petulant or anything like that. He was, he was being very uh, clear and concise about being, please being quiet. I, this is very important. You mm -hmm. need to hear them. Mm -hmm. So they did. And he just began to tell them about how that he was, yes, of course, he was their child, but he was a reincarnation. And his original self was an alien that lived on Mars thousands of years ago. Mm -hmm. He then told them that he was born into this body to save humankind. And Amazing. I guess they, they, they kind of thought, he, oh, okay, great. 
it's like, what do you tell a seven-year-old that tells you, hey, I was an alien. I'm now uh, uh, here to save you all. It's like, okay, kid, we'll get another log for the fire. <laughs> hmm. So uh, he persisted on this throughout his life and started to, you know, sh he showed more and more that this kid is he's very intelligent. Um, I believe they took an IQ test of his uh, for him or whatever. And he rated it at 200, which is beyond genius. Wow. I think we normal people. What's up? Um, so yeah, this kid around the age of uh, 14 to 15, he, oh yeah, by the way, he is, like I said, 200 on his IQ, supposedly. It's Russia, who knows? Um, and so is beyond genius level. I think we're normally like at a hundred and change, but nothing close. So around the age of 14, 15, he was invited to tell his story on Russian national television. And so he decided, okay, got there. And he was like, he told him the exact story. Like he told his family when he was seven. He was reincarnated, came here to save us. And then he explained that there are others on earth just like him. And they all called themselves the indigo children. Mm -hmm. So he began to tell them that his people that lived on Mars, they were very, very tall, uh, uh, around seven feet. They had elongated heads. Mm -hmm. They were extraordinarily intelligent. Their technology was far beyond anything we can imagine. Like, just insane. They were able to travel through space. They were able to travel through time, which is boggling. So he would explain that they would also travel through space, these things called um, space portals, where they would basically set up they would go somewhere in their in their spaceships, set up a space portal somewhere else, and they would be able to just instantly travel from one spot to another mm -hmm. without having to actually get into go into space. Then he would also explain that they would have certain ships that were triangular that were meant for you know localized space, not 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 deep space, but localized, you know, the galaxy, this galaxy that we're in. Mm -hmm. And that his people would constantly come and to us, to, to Earth, to, you know, watch us because at the time we were, you know, just starting out they, we, we, and they wanted to see how things were progressing. Also, it's, you know, they're scientists in the long run. So pretty interesting that there's a, there's a civilization happening right next door. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he explained all this and then he explained that, that his people were able to, um, halt their aging process at the age of 35 because of the carbon monoxide that they breathed in. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that they were essentially immortal barring any external you know, problems. So he didn't explain that his people were at war with one another. They were at a civil war. Mm. It was basically, he didn't explain why, but he explained basically, you know, the intelligent ones, there was always like the others that were like more intelligent. So I guess they wanted to control. Uh, so they, they were just at civil war. So he explained that when he was 15 on Mars, him and others were tasked to do to be in the war, that, that there's no, you know, your children, you can't. So he would be uh, part of an air raid force that would just go around bombing other aliens. What? Yeah. Then he said that his people were eventually wiped out due to nuclear war with one another. Oh. Yeah. And so the, the ones that survived 
and eventually died. He didn't explain how because he did. Remember, like I said, he said they were basically immortal. Um, I'm guessing radiation or something. Who knows? Uh, those were the ones that decided that they should go, they should be reincarnated and come to us because they were seeing early on that we were a war, you know, warlike people. We were fighting each other and he did not want the same fate of his people to happen to us. Mm -hmm. Now, bear in mind, his stuff all happened thousands of years ago. And this kid was born in 1996. Like, so he could have, you could have helped us out years and years ago. <laughs> Why'd you decide to come back now? Interesting. Hmm. So, um, let's see. He then, uh, he explained that, you know, there, he, he came here to save us and all that. And then he gave out like small little prophecies, nothing crazy. Well, However, I mean, some checked out. What's that? Oh, yes, that is true. Yes, some did check out. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, he said that for us to expand ourselves and to like learn more about the universe and become more whole, we need to open the Sphinx of Giza. Mm -hmm. And he explained that there is an opening latch behind one of the ears. Mm -hmm. Now, 10 years later, after this kid said that, they, they you know, scan of the Sphinx show that there is um, something in the head that they've yeah. not seen, that they've not noticed before. He said there's yeah. secrets in there, right? And that it would, it, everyone would be explained, it would like unlock a lot of mysteries for people or something? Well, yes. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. Yeah, he didn't really clarify what kind of secrets or anything because he says he doesn't know. He just knows that it's there. And like I said, uh, they did look and see and they did say that there was some kind of passage back there and something back there that they didn't see. But uh, there, people are saying that maybe the government there actually found something and are not telling everybody else or because they're like, oh, no, there's nothing here, blah, 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 blah. Everything's okay. Don't bother us about this. Uh, <laughs> so uh, there's that. And then he also said that there would be a big flood and a lot of people would die. Now, hmm. here's the thing. He did say two different versions. He said there would be a global flood and not many people would live. And then he would say there would be a flood, just specific flood, and many would die. Mm. and this happened in, in 2012 there was a flood mm -hmm. in uh, Russia southern Russia and uh, it was like 171 people or plus were killed mm -hmm. so I guess in that he was kind of right but I mean did he say that's what he was talking about uh, here's the problem uh, as you were mentioned earlier mm -hmm. he he's gone <laughs> yeah so that's what happened guys we really really got into really researching this guy and um i pretty much knew almost everything about him a few weeks ago but as my memory serves me um thank god tommy did a good refresher today and um but when i really started researching i'm like well where is he now and like nobody had anything but i think what we did find out is that he's like working for the government or something yes working <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh. yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, he actually said that the Earth's ma magnetic poles will shift and go the uh, each way, other way, which scientists have said, yeah, that's going to be happening soon. That might happen very soon. Remember, uh, not too long ago, we saw that thing on uh, it happens every like couple thousand, uh, for like what, 20,000 years or something. That's right. And we're, and we're due to have it. He yeah. said this when he was a kid that this is going to happen. So he didn't specify when, though. That's a problem. Um, yeah, no. So Boris, now here's the thing. They said he lives. They didn't say if he's there now in Volgograd, Russia. So that's, I guess, if he lived there, if he was born there, or if he's there now, was not 
explained. What was explained was uh, people's stories that he and his mother were taken in the middle of the night <laughs> by the Russian government for protection from the media. As you know that media, they love to they love to break in people's houses and 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 and, and hassle them at two a.m. Yeah. So uh, very media. So not like Russia. Yeah, no, it's it's completely media. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, he, they they got psychics to try to connect with him, see if he's okay. And he says that he's fine. He's in a in a rural place with his mother, and they're being protected by the Russian government, and they're helping people. Now, this is something that people said that when they asked about him, they, they went around asking about him. Almost verbatim, they said the exact same thing. Oh, he's fine. He's in a, in a rural place with his mother. He's being protected by the government and helping them help people. Huh, line by line, nice general statement. Yes. So, uh, he, I mean, now, what, what would he be, like 23? Yeah, I think. No, he'd be 27. Yeah. Or 26, I don't know, my math's bad. Uh -huh. uh, so, like, every once in a while, I guess, some info about him pops up, but nothing crazy. And he would just talk about, like, you know, hey, uh, stop killing each other, I guess. Uh, but I love Mother Russia. Uh, <laughs> really? I didn't know that. Yeah, so, uh, he, but it would happen through, it would happen through psychics and whatnot, and they're oh. like, he, <laughs> and yeah. he's like, he's trying to help us all, and all this stuff. So, I mean, I guess that's okay. I hope he's okay, because it'd be cool if he's still alive. But, uh, you know, yeah, I think he's definitely still alive. I hope so. But, you know, Russia. We all know how what their shenanigans are about. Yeah, and that's how we're going to... That's where we're going to leave that topic. <laughs> Russia. Yep. Yep. I'm just hoping they didn't tie him to a tank and be like, use your brain powers to control the world. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, so guys, yes, here you have it. Um, we looked it up, and yeah, just like Tommy said, um, the middle of the night. Actually, I did do screenshots on this. I don't know where my phone is. Pause. And I quote, Boris is said to have disappeared along with his mother, and a number of attempts by Western journalists to track him down has failed. One journalist has been informed by one of the Russian associates that Boriska is now in a remote village under the protection of the Russian government. And an attempt to reach him would be futile. Wow, futile? Doesn't that mean deadly? No. no that's fatal. No, yeah, that's fatal. Futile you know, means it'll just, you're wasting your time. Non-winning battle. Interesting. Oh, because that's safe. Um, a several, several psychics have claimed that they have been able to communicate with Bariska through their minds and that they have been replied by Bariska with a similar saying that he's in a remote place with his mother, but he's doing okay and that the Russia, Russian government has something to do with it. Okay, well, that's where we're leaving it today. Just so you know, that's where he's at. Um, we were hoping it's nothing sketchy, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, so leave in the comments below what you guys think. Um, and please make sure, thank you, Tommy, so much for stopping by um, and being an expert on this. Um, please make sure to like and subscribe and be the first to share with your friends um, because this is where you heard it here as to where Boris, aka Bariska, um, is at. And um, you know what? I hope he's just having a great time there. Yeah, that's what's happening. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Guys. Namaste. Let's pray for him. <laughs>